Can you tell us a funny, uh, embarrassing or even memorable story from that early part of your career? I'm sure there's lots in the book. Indeed. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there were many, many situations, I think, where you sort of look, you learn from them. But I do remember one where, again, the trainees were given the job of setting up banquets in the afternoon because they didn't have to pay us. And the waiters right. came back and we came, we also worked tonight. But in those days, you didn't have these wonderful new set-up tables and everything else. We just had trellis or trestle, actually, trestle yep. tables. And you flick down the trestles at either end stood and we then clothed it and this was sort of very sort of pompous you know evening as a masonic evening actually very you know ladies night and we had top table sprigs there and we laid it all up with all the cutlery and then all the glasses and there were several wines and flowers and then we had the masonic silverware of these different epinets and things you know all over the place and looked, looked magnificent and with these formal events, there's the Toastmaster, and he used to go around the table and, you know, bang on the table and for, you know, so, you know now I raise our glasses to whatever. And I was just standing there alongside this fellow trainee, and he banged the table right, very heavily, and this fellow stood up and he knocked the table. And as he knocked the table, he just fell over. And there was an almighty crash and all the glass and everything else. And everybody came running around the Metro D and everybody lifted up the table. And one thing we suddenly noticed was as he put the trestle out, he slot a little bolt in. Right. We had not seen this bolt. And we looked at each other. Not one single table had a bolt locked in it. They were all just balanced out like this. And I think that became the longest night of my life I nearly turned grey and every time they banged the gavel I had this image of a domino situation of all <laughs> the tables going down and it was, it was horrendous but there you know I mean many other things I mean, I put it you know people died in mm. the ground in East Paul part of because they were elderly people yep. and many of them there were certain humorous aspects to it I know it's a bit of a black comedy but you know there were situations and there wasn't a big emotional attachment they were elderly people I didn't know yep. you'd go in and they were dead Just the you know, and I mean passed. everything that you know happens in the hotel there I mean one watches you mentioned Basil Fawlty yep. and Fawlty Towers I could you know recount a, a tale of every episode of Basil Fawlty's where the true thing actually happened you know there's nothing you know it wasn't made up those stories were you know could be translated back to the hotel i think you mentioned in the book that polly who plays who plays polly yeah. as his wife used to frequent the she, hotel and you feel she that. used to come i mean at the time we didn't appreciate anything about it but and this was what i was told afterwards you know i hope it's not a thing of legend but um she was appearing at Devonshire Theatre, which was just along the road from the Grand. And she used to come into the saloon bar and, you know, and it was the barman who said, oh, yes, we used to chat about things. And I rather like to think that some of those episodes that came out, because she wrote it along with John Cleese. Yep. They came out of uh, events that happened at the Grand. True or not, I don't know, but it's nice to think it did.